talk a lot of wrestling. It is called another wrestling podcast, uh, if you will. But uh, let's get, let's get into some real world stuff. This is a whole new. 202 uh, episode. Uh, let's talk about some other things. Cooter, a lot of stuff happened in uh, on TV lately. A lot of people getting uh, called out for old tweets. And so now, can, can you explain what happened with Kevin Hart? Uh, Kevin Hart was supposed to be the host for... What is it? The, not For the Oscars? Yeah, for the Oscars. I believe it was the Oscars. And, you know, social media, bro. It's, it's those fucking... Those Twitter whores who, who can dig up anything. The trolls on the internet have made it so that Kevin Hart, America's sweetheart, can't be the host of the Oscars because he made some joke about uh, homosexuals if his son was gay. And this is something that's been brought up and that he's addressed like a million times. So it's kind of like overdone. Like, why are we still talking about this is basically how he felt. And I, I don't know, man. This this it's really gone too far, don't you think? It, it, so I'm I'm just reading about one of the tweets that he had. This is from a few years ago. If my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my <laughs> it, in my voice, "Stop, that's gay." Right? <sighs> that's fucking a great joke. He's it's, a comedian. It's great, but like it's not like he. It's just. It, <sighs> yeah, it's not even that offensive. Like, if they want to get crazy, why don't you watch Delirious by Eddie Murphy? Why don't you go have that far back? He just starts off the pro the program by saying, you know, the f word. I'm not gonna say it on here. God forbid somebody gets fucking sensitive. I've said it on here by accident, <laughs> and I begged Credo to take it out. <laughs> I, I, was, I was talking about him and his love for the Bulldogs and the Hart Foundation, and I dropped it. So. <laughs> yeah, it was complete accident, but Credo forgot to edit that one out. The world is so freaking sensitive. I mean, like, the baby, it's cold outside. They say the song's a little rapey. Rapey. Uh, like, <laughs> some guy just trying to get it in. Dude, not only that, it fucking, they're trying to ban Elf from being played because of that song. We're not allowed to listen to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer because it promotes bullying now. Man, I I grew up always saying, like, that's gay. I remember growing up with my brother. So yeah. like, if we didn't like anything, it was it was be like, oh, that's gay. I don't want to do it. Or You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's gay. I'm not, go- I'm, not do- I'm not going there. It's, you know, and like, at any point in my life did I not mean that it was like homo- homosexual. Yeah, I was just, gay was like, that's lame. That was stupid. Or I didn't want to go do that. You know, like, I'm, ugh, that's gay. I'm not going to go do that. You know, like that, I remember using it and like, man, people, I don't know. I, what is it? It's just like, you like know, you said, who called trolls, this man. years ago. Remember uh, Patrice O'Neill? Yep. It's funny because you guys were just talking about Opie and Anthony and he did an hour on Opie and Anthony one time. It was around the time where do you remember when Tracy Morgan got in trouble for doing that during a stand up routine on HBO? Yeah. All right. He was dropping the F the F bomb. And he got in serious trouble. And and uh, Patrice just had a way of breaking down what happened to Tracy. And that's why he's glad he's not that big. Because no one's ever going to go after him. Because he doesn't owe anybody anything. Once you become Hollywood, look, look at Jimmy Kimmel. Look what has happened to Jimmy Kimmel. The biggest... He, he he thinks he's our conscience now. Shut the fuck up, Jimmy. Do you remember what? Do you like remember Jimmy. what you started? At, what? <laughs> I like Jimmy Kimmel. I love the show. He's dude. He's so pompous and arrogant, and he's become one of these Hollywood elites where like he thinks he's our conscience. No. Meanwhile, you used to do the Man Show with Adam Carolla and have bitches jumping up and down on trampolines. That, but you know, now you're Mr. Hashtag Me Too. Shut the fuck up, Credo. You another one. He's just, funny. I love him. He's not funny. He bro. is, too, and that's just he a agree the, the to disagree. Hollywood dick, and you know it. See, I've been to the Jimmy don't Kimmel show. To do. This is not what I want to do because all but we're gonna do is fights, and that's what I don't want to do. Not an argument, but because you're gonna tell me that's not his viewpoint, but it is. It's, it I is, agree I'm with not, his viewpoint. I love his viewpoint. I'm not trying to make it political, Credo. But what I'm trying to say is, unfortunately, to a certain extent, it is very political, and it's it's ruined comedy. 
It has. It's a lot of it. What's sad is that a lot of the comedy on TV now is telling more truth than actual regular news. I have to yes. get like truth from Comedy Central, from The Daily Show. I got to get it from these late night hosts because nobody else is uh, telling the truth. Everybody wants to be in their own uh, political agenda. Everybody's trying to vote for my side, do this for whatever right. side, and they want to tell you what they want to hear. People want to hear what they want to hear, and you're never going to change that. You're never going to tell somebody different than what they want to hear, and that's it. They're just channeling to what people want to hear, and it doesn't matter whether they're wrong or right. It's just what they want to hear, and that's it. And, and you know what? You know what, what makes us come full circle now? Well, Because we can get back to wrestling with us now. Look, Hulk Hogan can come back and host a pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia. WWE does not give a fuck. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? It was like a crowd, testing though, ground the crowd, too. The crowd was a, the crowd there in Saudi Arabia probably loved the shit. They exactly. He's like, yo, man, did you see Hulkie's Packer, bro? Holy shit! He smashed his best friend's wife, dropped a few n bombs, and now what? he's back on TV. Good for what him, bro. What did about that, man? Oh my <laughs> god, this is crazy. It's my daughter did what? It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy how they tested the waters with that too, because it wasn't like let's just dip our toes into it, see what happens with the reaction of Hogan. It was like we're throwing him out there. This is like a big pay per view for them. He is out there. There's no like oh, show some vid- videos about him returning or anything. It was just he's there, and then it was. They, then they pulled the curtain back. They were like trying to look around, like, "Wait, is anybody saying anything bad about us?" Before they like they give us Hogan again. It's like they had to test the waters, hide them away real quick, and then they're just listening they had to now. Test you know, the waters overseas. If it was so much, sure. yeah, because if it's so much bad press, like the whole Kevin Hart thing, you know, it's like it, people, you know, I mean, people are caring more about a tweet from two years ago about something that wasn't really meant to be like all gays suck ago. or something. You know, it's like it was. He just said a joke and. They won't even let him back for that, and that's a little bit ridiculous. So, like he said, people change, people grow, people whatnot. But like what he said, and after I had to look it up, like I googled it, you know, what, what were these jokes? And it's like oh, I thought it was, you know, something like kill all gays or you know something. It's, it, it's, it's a, it's I don't know, it's a what do you call it? Kind of a joke, you know? It's Petty like, bullshit. It's trivial. Yeah, and it's like man, like it's not. Left, it's not right, it's not whatever. I think it's just people, it's just social media as a whole. It doesn't matter who you are, it's just people that want to hide behind their account, their name, or whatever. And just, you know, it's like a daily thing, like they want to take something down, you know, take something down if, oh, Kevin Hart said something about what? Let's let's see what he did, and just, you know, trolls, man. You We're know feeding who started the trolls. That? I want to say it the was trolls. the Washington Post, Credo, that, that blew Kev- this thing, like, way out of proportion. Do you think it's Twitter mainly? Do you think it's like just that kind of social media? I mean, why do you Facebook... think? Let me, let's be honest. Why do you think I don't go on Twitter, Credo? I know. It's, well, it's, the tweet has apparently become mightier than the sword, if you will. You know, it's crazy. It's what ha- Twitter is like. You man, no matter what you say on there, it's it, it could be it could haunt you. Hey guys, if I could just give my opinion on this, this is uh, first off, I just want to say yes. Hey, Robert Strauss, formerly Robbie E. I'm here. But I've been listening, and I just think it's out of this world that a guy who is as big of a star as Kevin Hart years ago might have said something remotely dumb like every human has in history. And for that, he's missing an opportunity of a lifetime to be part of the Oscars in front of his family and friends. And this was as big of a star he is. This was a big honor for him. And for something so stupid, he's, he's... getting pulled from it, it just doesn't make sense i mean am i the only one that thinks that no oh, oh, hey rob thanks for uh, joining us uh I, I got a question for you because i mean you're in that social media realm of being famous being online has social media maybe hurt being famous in a way like i mean things that could come back to yeah. you uh, being used against you even after maybe you've may have matured or forgotten that you posted this online i mean this is we're talking oh, about like old I, stuff I mean, yeah, completely. I mean, just me, myself, I've been through a lot of processes with shows and things that I've done where there's been background checks on me, where luckily there was nothing bad enough to get me in trouble or keep me from getting a job, but where I got some stuff sent to me that I had to delete from my social media that was like mm. the most ridiculous things, like um, a, a toy gun or, uh, you know, just things that could... It, it, re- yeah. Anything come close to being something bad. So it's just crazy. But um, to, uh, to answer your question, I mean, yeah, I, I do think it's taken away from being famous because 
if I really think hard, and I'm sure if we Googled it right now, you could probably find a list of people who lost opportunities on big jobs they could have had over having something dumb that they wrote when they were a kid. And I just think everybody makes mistakes, and that, that's just ridiculous. Things can be deleted. People should be able to be forgiven for that kind of stuff, unless it's something so drastic or it's something that they're currently doing now. If they're regularly on social media talking, you know, racist kind of stuff or killing or anything like that, I get it. But if it's from something 20 years ago, I mean, that's just, it's not fair. Yeah. We're different people now. Definitely. Uh, it's, you know, we have the freedom of speech, but just don't have that freedom. Of, just, don't, just don't be an idiot all the time online, basically. But, you know, for being famous for yourself, uh, how do you deal with what they call the internet trolls or just people that are always out there just to trash anything and everything, you know, no matter what you do, do you get kind of people that just like, just don't care? They hate you. And they, that's all they want to do is just trash anything. Uh, do you, got, do yeah, you have a no, way of dealing I mean, with them? Well, they do. I mean, there's two th things that are good for me. Luckily, um, I've been on your show before. I've probably talked about this, but I live in like my own Robbie E world where I really don't care about anyone but myself. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't focus. It's hard. It's very hard. Even if I read this stuff to bring me down, I like focus on myself. I don't really know other things going on. So I don't always pay attention to dumb tweets and stuff on the internet like that. Mm. But then also the fact that I'm a pro wrestler, I'm playing a role so all, a lot of the hate that I get for Robbie E or Robbie e sucks or I hate him or whatever, that's Robbie E. That's not really me, Robert Strauss. So, like, I could separate the two. So if you're bashing Robbie E, I'm like, well, I mean, in a way, I'm a bad guy. Maybe it's just because you hate me and my TV character. Maybe I'm just doing a good job of being a wrestler. So I'm able to kind of separate the two. But for the normal human who's getting all this hate mail and hate tweets and Instagram posts, when they're just a regular person, like an actor or a baseball player or a politician, mm. them I feel bad for, you know, because that is kind of hard to deal with. But because I'm used to being a bad guy, it's like sometimes I kind of like it when I get that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Now, you know, like you mentioned too, since the last time we talked, you, you dropped the E and you gained the brand. Can you tell us a little bit about the Robert Strauss brand? Because I'm, I'm loving every minute of, uh, of this right now. Yeah, well, I'll tell you first and foremost, guys, your host, Steve Credo, is the man because if it wasn't for him, there would be no Robert Strauss brand because he is the creator of the awesome videos that you see all over my social media and House of Hardcore. So, Steve, thank you. you those videos you make are top-notch and they're amazing, mm -hmm. and I do appreciate it. But as far as the character, uh, you know, it was time Jersey Shore was played out, even though now it's back, go <laughs> figure, but... I, I just felt that Robbie E had ran its course. I needed something new and everyone in the world is a uh, social media person. Now every, everyone on Instagram and Twitter thinks they're, you know, this guru and they write all these positive tweets and half the time it's all, it's all BS anyway. So I figured why not turn that into a character? So I'm basically, you know, a corrupt motivational guy. I just want your money and I'll tell you that'll change your life. Mm -hmm. Similar to a uh, Tony Robbins or a Gary V and I come out with a little microphone and it's cool. It's something different and no one's really doing it in wrestling right now. So I think it's kind of like fun and I think it fits me perfect. I love it, man. It's great, and like I said, you know, I'm just the enhancer. I love, I love working with uh, in the wrestling business and uh, kind of taking some of my idea, my my skills, and enhancing your guys' ideas. So it's it's great to be a part of that. But you know, you've also joined the podcast world on your own show with Matt Coon, uh, Why it ended? Uh, how's that been going for you? And uh, how can our fans tune in and hear uh, hear you guys each week? Uh, well, it's going awesome. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I didn't think I was going to, cause like I said earlier, I only care about myself. So I didn't think I'd care about other people's <laughs> stories, but I do. And it's, I, I'm excited every week to sit down with someone for an hour and hear why it ended for them or why a portion of their career ended. Um, you know, we're on the MLW network. We're getting great numbers. People are loving it. We get way, you know, 99% of our feedback is all positive. No one really ever has a problem with the show. Uh, last week we had Tommy dreamer, this coming week, we have David Arquette, so we're getting some great guests, and yeah, it's really something different. It's a really, it's an, a different approach to an interview based into why their careers have ended, so it gets right to the point, and yeah, I mean, Matt Coon is the man, and I'm, I'm enjoying doing it, so every, every Wednesday, it drops on the MLW Network, and you can get it on iTunes or whyitended.com or anywhere you get your podcast. It's there.
Awesome. Now, you know, the, the biggest news, I think, though, coming up for 2019 is that you are also appearing on The Rock's new show, The Titan Games. Uh, what exactly can you tell us about this show if uh, you have no non-disclosure agreements going on here? But, you know, I know it debuts on January, NBC. Uh, what was the selection process like, and is there just anything you could tell us about the games itself and being a part of it? Well, I break those agreements anyway. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> it's kind of like the American Gladiators on steroids. It's, you know... 30 second to two or three minute competitions of just like insane, insane stuff that you're doing. And the more wins you get, the further you go to eventually be a part of the rocks team. Um, it's from the makers of American Ninja warrior. So, you know, it's hardcore and the set is worth watching alone. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's like based almost like the movie 300. It's very rustic and old school. And I mean, the rocks, the host. So anything the rock touches is gold. So you know it's going to be a great show, and I mean you get to see me compete. So I mean this it's a win-win for everybody. Nice. January third, it drops first episode NBC. Nice, and you know you're amongst uh, you know one of the s- select few of uh, Titans who were selected. I mean, how many people tried out for these games, and uh, what was it like when you found out that you're going to be a part of it? Uh, well, it's funny because originally it was the number odd, the number that The Rock stated was over eighty thousand applicants. But now he just posted the other day that in the, and it ended up being over 100,000 applicants. It's one of the most tried out for reality shows ever. But funny enough, I didn't even try out. I didn't even know what the show was through my muscle and fitness dad bod destroyer videos where I was doing workouts with oh, yeah. my baby twins. Um, someone from casting on, uh, on the show saw one of those videos, reached out to me. They flew me to L.A. I had to go through. Uh, they flew about 120 of us there for this final fitness competition. And then they chose half of us for the final cast. So oh. that was it. I mean, it was luck. I lucked out. And it's, it's been a great opportunity. It's great exposure. And, I mean, man, I got to become best friends with The Rock. How <laughs> cool am I? That's awesome, man. You know, we've come full circle. where We started off with all the negativity uh, happening on social media. But look at that. I mean, uh, just from the power of social media, you were, you were seen. They saw you. They wanted you. They casted you. So, I mean, it's like a, it's a little dream come true where you don't, you don't have to do anything and you still got called for it. So, Hey, you're, you're right. You know, I was telling Bully Ray the story, the same exact story the other day that I just told you. And that's what his answer was. Wow. So the world of social media hooked it up for you. Great. You know, and it's true. So social media does have its perks. I mean, anybody can see anything at any time. And, you know, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that, it is free. So that's why I always tell wrestlers and everything, you know, utilize this stuff. Get yourself over. You never know who you're going to connect with or who is going to see what. Anything could happen. Awesome, man. Well, Robert Strauss, the Robert Strauss brand. We wish you nothing but the best. Thanks for uh, stopping by today. And uh, where can all the fans uh, hey. keep up with you and maybe troll you on the Internet? <laughs> <laughs> well, no problem. I love anything with you, Steve. I love you're the man. But uh, for me, Twitter and Instagram is at Robert Strauss. And um, yeah, and then just remember, Wednesdays, like I said earlier, why it ended drops. Make sure you're listening and leaving five-star ratings and reviews and give the podcast a chance. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, Rob. Thanks so much, man. I think this world, they just need to grow the fuck up and just man up, mm-hmm. woman up, deal with it. It's fucking life. People are going to say things that you might not like. Who fucking cares? Man, it, like, who cares? Seriously, have you seen this tweet David Arquette sent a, probably a few weeks ago or so? Not too, not too long ago. Um, he tweeted, Finally heard Jim Cornette talk shit about me. He had some strong points. Missed most of the obvious ones. One point I'd like to make is you don't have to be an asshole to share your opinion. Uh, what do you think about that one? That's you know Cornette always has his strong opinions about certain stuff. Um, and this is just David Arquette being nice about it, uh, you know. Well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of David Arquette. I really am, and, and a lot of people give him a hard time lately. Like, they just, I, I'm giving, like, he's, for all the shit that he did in WCW and that horrible stuff, he's making up for everything. And people just, like, give him such a hard time. Like, I was listening, he was, he was actually on Busted Open, he called in, and Bully Ray gives him a hard time because Bully Ray just, for some reason, doesn't respect the guy. He just he he thinks that he's chasing his own dream rather than doing it for other people. Everybody's chasing their own damn dream. I think he's just making up for making it up for himself, you know, to try to prove to himself. And uh, I just everybody just gives him a hard time. Jim Cornette gives everybody a hard time. 
Everybody. He's got something to say about everybody. Uh, yeah, unless you're the Midnight Express or the Rock and Roll Express, you don't really have a nice thing to say about anybody. Except for New Jack, oddly enough. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't bad, though, when we met him in person. I remember talking to him in Poughkeepsie backstage uh, before his show, did a little comedy thing. And granted, I mean, I only spent about 10 minutes or so with him, but, it, you know... I don't know. He came off as a nice person, granted whatever his other views are, but he was fun to talk to. Uh, I mean, he gave his opinions without being too much of an asshole. I don't know. Mostly, it's probably just a show, to, you know, a show a little bit on his shows and stuff, just to get people listening and talking, right? But man, it, I guess social media has ruined it a little bit. A lot of people have been ruining stuff, and it's like, can't we just get back to jokes and having fun and joking about things? And man, you make one little thing about oh, somebody God. or something, and it's the end of the world. I mean, if if anybody ever had some of that raw audio from the marked up days, like early marked up days, which by the way I probably still do. We'll have but to go that, back. the time. But calendar. yeah, I, yeah. But here's the thing, like Credo, you've known me what, fucking thirty years. A long time. Long fucking time, bro. And am I the same person now that I was thirty fucking years ago? Have I made no progress? Uh, well, you kind of went in a crazy, angry way, but uh, you made progress. You, made, you went up the ladder towards <laughs> going more crazier. But no, yes, everybody, we all age, we get, we learn things, or whatever. Uh, Not even that. I mean, as, as much as I, you, you, you all think I'm a, a loud, crazy, obnoxious asshole, this, this might be true, but that doesn't make me a bad person just because... You don't agree with my viewpoint. Yo, me and Credo, we really don't agree on much on anything. Anymore. Yeah, but we come together for this. <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, you know. He was he in my wedding. Few... He was in my yes! wedding. Uh, like, uh, How the <laughs> fuck did that happen? You know, we are in this Twitter world where, you know, it, it could start things. Like, look at the whole Daniel Bryan revolution a long time ago. People on social media didn't speak up about how pissed off they were with the whole Baptista, Baptista win. And uh, Daniel Bryan had never been put into the, the main event, WrestleMania 30, and win and have two matches and whatnot. It's crazy. I mean, sometimes it's good for the, it's for the good, but most of the times it's just like, what, what can we do next? You know what I mean? Like People just don't even care what they're going to say or what they're going to ruin or what they'll change. They just want to find that next thing that's in the news or, or anything. And that goes all into wrestling too, whether it's in the real world or the wrestling world. Uh, a, a lot of shit. I mean, even last week we talked about the whole downfall of Raw and how people are just talking about that. And look what happened this week where Seth Rollins, the first promo of the <laughs> night, is them talking about all the fans and everybody hating Raw. It's like they had to work that into a fucking uh, storyline just to be like, haha, it does, it's not really bad, everybody. We're, this, it's part of the story. Just keep watching kind of thing. And I was like, they did not just bring up the fact that everybody hates the show right now. They're going to blame it. Blame oh, yeah. it on the G. Corbin is going to be gone after by next week. You know, like that's they're going to change all that shit just because of of that. And He's I just left. He's the scapegoat, Mike. Didn't I say that last week? I was like, watch. Could you imagine that they're going to use this as a storyline and they're making Raw as atrocious as possible so that when Roman comes back, they they have something to cheer for. But instead of Roman, it's going to be Seth Rollins. Uh-huh. That's what you're going to use this as a storyline. To push Seth Rollins as the face of your brand, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure the WWE finally like read the text, the text, the, the tweets that are going out there. I mean, how atrocious Raw was the past couple of weeks, and then how they just kind of went into. I'm sure they 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 wanted to kind of like bring it up in a cool hip way, but to let you know that they they hear you your outpour of emotion and anger towards the product, but they're still going to suck. Oh. Listen, the, the ratings on Raw this Monday was lower than what it was the past couple weeks. It, it, was, it was like a, like a 2 million, 2.5 million viewers. That's fucking low for them. I mean, it gets lower and lower. Like A lot of people didn't get to hear the stuff that Seth Rollins had to say. And, and granted, like if you kind of like take a step back and look at it, Seth Rollins is speaking for us. I mean, what the f- who fucking cares about a Lucha House Party match? Mm-hmm. He brought up the fact that the Revival, one of the best tag teams in the world, and he has them in Lucha House Party matches. Basically, the person that should have been standing in that ring should have been Vince McMahon. Yeah. But Baron Corbin is going to take the heat for Vince McMahon. So yeah. that's basically what it is. Like, you know, you want to take your heat out on somebody, we're going to take it out on Baron Corbin. 
<laughs> meanwhile, Vince McMahon should be the guy standing right there getting the lecture. I'm pulling that bitch slap, yeah, dude. Poor AOP, though, too. I mean, look at these guys. They were a powerful tag team NXT come up. Uh, now with the whole fucking Drake Maverick thing, lose the tag team championships. And uh, how long? They, they didn't have it very long, right? I mean, uh, like a month, less than a month, or a little bit over. I don't know. It wasn't too long, right? I can't even tell you. Oh, oh, yeah. it, was it was more very, than a month. But not too long. It wasn't something that was memorable, let's put it that way. And, you know, putting it on Bobby Roode, uh, the little glorious tag team they got going now. So that, I think, was a de- desperation move just to be like, oh, something happened so they can get people to tune in kind of thing. Like, hey, let's try to get the audience back kind of move. Man, I don't know. Still, they're, they're throwing uh, anything out there. This pay-per-view better be good this weekend. Yo, still, did anybody notice how they tried to basically turn Seth Rollins into CM Punk this week? Make him try to sound like the voice of the voiceless, talking about what guys should be pushing. Because didn't Punk do something similar with like Zack Ryder and Dolph Ziggler? He's like, these are guys who busted their ass. And there's always it, there's always that one guy who kind of put an a, and I say this with quotations a shoot promo trying yeah. to push other people. It's always gonna happen. The mo- the realest one was CM Punk with the pipe bomb. But other than that, there's always gonna be that that someone goes out there and. and Kind of like puts a, a scripted shoot promo. Uh, just raw, raw was I, to me. It was it was kind of like a, a step in the right direction in a way, but it still kind of sucked mm. to me. Kind of, um, yeah, okay, a little more than kind of. You know what really bothered me was the booking of Nia Jax and the Ronda Rousey feud. <sighs> and what really pissed me off is you have a three hundred plus pound Samoan woman and another giant fucking close to 300 pound Samoan woman and they're both in the ring these two giant fucking women and the second Ronda comes down to the ring they both hightail and run <laughs> like if I was if it was me and Cooter were two 300 pound women and you had <laughs> <laughs> a woman coming to the ring that's about 145 pounds are we running like, are we running? No, we're going to fucking knock this bitch out. Who, you goddamn who, right. Why are they booking their, your two monster strong. women Make to strong. run away? Storyline, you know, the, oh a worked God. angle, of course. It sets I mean, so much disconnect still. There's just so much disconnect to the fucking product. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You and, then you want, and you want me to tune in on, on Sunday? Like, I, I'm going to tune in to certain matches on Sunday. That I'm invested in, and and they're SmackDown brand matches. I don't have any interest in Raw matches. I really no. don't. Well, I, mean, got- I heard a rumor that we're going to get the Demon on Sunday. That would be cool. But I don't. It would be a waste because why bring the Demon out when you're pushing Drew McIntyre? I mean, it's it's just a lot of things that you know, they don't do correctly and they don't do it right. Their timing sucks, and there's a huge disconnect. No, yeah, and you know, for everybody listening to, you know. Uh, TLC happening this weekend. We used to do whole shows on the pay per view, pay per views, guys. But it's come down to the point now where it's just like pick out the one thing you actually are looking forward to, and that and that's okay. I think that's what it should be about because then hopefully they'll, they'll everybody will understand what just not to put on TV anymore. Because do you think this whole pay per view as a whole has to make or break the end of the year in a way? It's the last pay per view of the year. Uh, people are down on Raw. SmackDown's okay. I mean, still has a lot of good things, but no, not the key that Raw is getting. But do you think TLC kind of has to be a little bit more than just the, another B pay per view? I, I guess no. so can, to change a few things, maybe or get no. strike people's interest. I don't know why. Because oh. next month is the reset month. Next month is the start of their of their road to WrestleMania. Yeah. We're fucking, we get, the, and everybody loves the Rumble. Well, let's be honest. Whether we watch for the, we're not watching for the matches. We're watching for the Rumble matches. We want to see some surprises. We want to see, you know, who's going to possibly end up where and what program. And it's, they get to kind of fix a lot of their fuck ups at this point because there's a lot to fix. I honestly didn't even watch Raw or SmackDown until before the show. Do you know what I watched Monday night? And it's funny you guys said Batista. What's that? He did. He did a. You ever see a movie called Escape Plan with Sylvester Stallone? Yes, yes. It was. It was him and Arnold. Well, Batista's in the sequel. Oh. And uh, you know he's not. 
He's not bad. You know Raw is really bad when you're like, damn, Batista's not a bad actor. <laughs> like, okay. you know, he's actually not bad. I'm like, you know, I used to say, you know, Drax is a really, really perfect character because you need to be a dumb lummox to fucking play Drax. <laughs> and that's lummox. perfect for Batista, right? But he's actually pretty – I mean, he doesn't have to say much. He just – yeah. Does what he does and boom. I mean, he's not bad in kickboxer either. So shout out to go. Are we going on a Batista? <laughs> he's like the sleeper <laughs> cell of Hollywood because he's he was also in a James Bond movie too, and he was like yes. it, it was such a minimal role, but it was at the same time it was such a big role for him. We go from talking TLC know. to Batista, like go from hating. I'm gonna rewind it back to TLC <laughs> because I mean it, it would be appropriate for them to actually put on a good show. Because you have Final Battle on Friday, that is the card on paper looks fucking amazing. So it's Final four hours Battle, now too. Yeah, and so if Final Battle is going to put on a show that everybody's going to talk about. I mean, I know Vince McMahon doesn't really care, but I think he should because if Final Battle is going to put on a show of the year. And then you have to follow them on Sunday. You're gonna look fucking stupid, and you're supposed to be the big dogs. And then, and then you talk about the road to WrestleMania at the Royal Rumble. I am not. A, I mean, I, I love the Royal Rumble, but the Royal Rumble is also ruined for me because of this fucking mix match challenge. Why? Because because the winners of the mix match challenge gets the number thirty spot. Oh uh, yeah, they're trying so to get rid, get rid of that heat so a little bit. What? It, 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 it fucking, I love when the number 30 spot's a mystery. Yeah, because now it's like yeah, when 29 comes yeah. out, it's like, oh, we already know 30. So you, it's... you know our truth is coming out at number 30 to do a stupid-ass dance break. Mm. Wait a minute. He he won the mix. Him and Carmella and the, won. Fi- the finals of the mix match challenge is our truth and Car- Carmella versus uh, Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. How the fuck did this happen, the finals? <laughs> it, 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 I, I couldn't tell you. I a, lot of, tell you. a lot of injuries and a lot of switching partners, I think. Or something like that. <laughs> but how about the sleeper of this pay per view is Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles? I mean, I'm looking forward to that. I want to see. It should be the show that main events, by the way. The match that main events, the damn show. Oh, I, I, I like this is this is Daniel Bryan's return. AJ Styles. This is one of those dream matches we haven't had uh, ever. So it, it, let's let's get this going. I mean, this is hopefully, like I said, a sleeper part of the pay per view, and I, this is the one thing I'm looking forward to just to see how these uh, two guys hopefully tear down the house. I, I don't think I can consider that a sleeper because I'm expecting it to be good. Well, and then, that's a problem, too, when you expect it to be good. And then they could probably be limited. Vince could probably put them opening the show. Oh. And he was like, go out there. You got 10 minutes. That's oh. including. <laughs> that, that's what I'm thinking minutes, about. Including entrances. Cause they, uh, yeah. I'm thinking about like Ronda Rousey putting her in like the main, that, the main event or something. Ugh. And, like, <laughs> oh. and that's not it ugh, towards Ronda. That's just Nia Jax. I think I think out of all the heels on the main roster today, Nia Jax is the one that I I fucking like. I actually have legit heat for. I like I hate her. I just can't stand her. Well, well Mike, you're, really- you're Finn Balor guy, uh, Demon guy. Uh, rumor, hopefully, I I don't know if we're gonna see the Demon until maybe hopefully number thirty at the Royal Rumble. But Drew McIntyre, man, I feel like he's gonna be rolling over Finn Balor tomorrow uh, this weekend, yeah. and that's sad. It's like Finn Balor is now the the stepping stone for some of these guys because it's like. Uh, <sighs> You no, know, here's know. the thing, though. I mean, so like, I want to see Finn Balor, like, f- finally get, like, a push and get some momentum going. But at the same time, I can't really, like, complain because Drew McIntyre is a guy we haven't seen in the top spot. And I, I see what they're doing with Drew, Drew McIntyre. So if, I mean, I hope that in this match, they at least, you know, give Balor some offense. And give him something, but if if Drew McIntyre goes over, I'm okay because it's something you know it's it's building to something new. I mean, it's building to something. I mean, we asked for something new, and they're building a new star in Drew McIntyre, so I'm okay with that. I mean, but a part of me just wants to see you know Finn Balor just start building some momentum and just you know give him the IC title because we all know what Rollins is going to be doing come WrestleMania. Let's see Balor take the IC title to another level. Well, speaking of IC titles, I'm not even uh, – we're not going to talk about this whole thing, but, I mean, I, I'm not a Dean Ambrose fan. I could care less. Uh, Seth Rollins is good, but I, I I just don't care about this feud. Like, I'm just – I don't know. I, I don't – Me either. I, 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 I forgot that the IC title is even in there. These two guys are, like, on the same 
uh, I don't know, they're from the Shield, the same kind of level kind of thing. These should be like feuding with and building up other people right now. Like I feel like these two guys don't need to be going against each other. And I'm, I'm like, I feel like I've seen it kind of thing. I just don't care about this match. I don't want you to have about it. at least like two. <laughs> They had the fucking feud for the what was it? Uh, God, when Rollins was champ. Yeah, and Rollins was the heel, and Ambrose was the face. Yeah, there was a there was a cage match as a blow off. Hell in the cell. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. God damn. Yeah, they. I remember that they that match. They had a couple other matches too. They had a lumberjack match at SummerSlam one year. I remember that. Um, I remember when Rollins first turned and and uh, Ambrose was chasing him, and then they went to the Money in the Bank match. I remember that. I mean, and, and I talk about a disconnect with the product. Like they really, they really messed up this feud for me. Like I, this was one of those feuds, and, and we discussed it last week. That it could have been a great feud if they just took the entertainment aspect out of it and just let it become one of those old school blood feuds. But no, they had to throw the entertainment shit in there. They had to do this. They had to do that. And then not to mention, it's for the IC title, which has been overshadowed completely. Like I, I, it just there's no interest for me whatsoever, and it sucks because this is a feud that could have been good. This this is a feud that they did it correctly. Could have been a big match at WrestleMania. Uh, can, can we stop asking fucking Renee Young about her thoughts about her fucking husband? Or I'm like, oh, yes, we get it. They're together. We don't have to fucking ask her. Just commentate. Don't fucking. I don't care about. Oh, tell her, why aren't you know? What do you think about your husband or this and that? I'm like, dude, she got pissed off last week over that. Yep, and and I don't know if that was like a shoot or if that was like, you know, written yeah. that way. But she legit seemed like she got upset. Like, I don't know if it was with Graves or with Cole or like, why are you always asking me as if I, because we're married? I'm I'm in his brain twenty four seven. You know, like, it'd be terrible, like dick. You know, it'd be terrible, and I could see the WWE writing this is that that you know you you're slowly building to something with Renee, and she's gonna stick by her man. And she's gonna ha- be the heel. Ugh, she's gonna be like Miss Elizabeth, where she doesn't wrestle. She comes in, slaps somebody, and that's it. And fucking yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, well, how about the, the one thing? Uh, what do you think is gonna happen with this match? Because now Oscar has been thrown into it. Oscar, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch for the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, I don't. It, I I wonder how bad Becky is. Even if she's even that bad, like injured. If it's still. She got a concussion. I mean, it, what it is what it is. But what do you guys? How do you book this? I mean, the only I think we've mentioned it a few times. I've been reading about other people saying this too. But uh, Becky Lynch dropping it, and I think, believe it or not, Cooter, I think giving it back to Asuka, give Asuka something to, to to play with for a little bit, if you if you will, because she's been like tossed aside again after yeah. the whole streak was dead, and then it was like, what do we do? Well, you fucking overbooked her too much that you can't do anything with her, and you just, <laughs> you just had to make her lose and just be whatever. So. Get rid of the championship, put it on Asuka. Charlotte doesn't need it again for the fucking 50th time already. And Becky, I mean, uh, Cooter, I think you said it, we all said it, somebody said it. Uh, put her in the Women's Royal Rumble match, have there her win, go. put her on Raw, right? So and this is going to be an interesting one to what they do, I guess, for this. Because, uh, I don't know, I think that's one of the logical things to do. But I guess it all depends on who they want for Ronda Rousey. Uh, it's going to yeah, be Charlotte if they, or... if, they, if they do Becky and, and, and Ronda... Main eventing mania, that's fucking awesome. Like, and and and, I, and again, I think you you're right. You have to put the belt. You have to get the belt off of her, so she can challenge whoever she wants if she wins that rumble. And Oscar definitely needs something because they built her last year as that unstoppable force. She was unbeaten for like two and a half years with NXT and all this shit. Long. And you know, you can have her feud with. With with Charlotte, but to me, like I was kind of hoping, and and for, for what was last month's pay per view was Survivor Series. Yep. And I was hoping that when Becky picked somebody to go up against Ronda in her place, we all knew it was going to be Charlotte. But part of me was really, really hoping it would have been Oscar, mm. because I thought, damn, if 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 there's one person on the roster who isn't going to take. Ronda's bullshit in the ring. It's gonna be that bitch. And yeah, I think I think Oscar would put up a legit fight up against that bitch. That's one tough woman. Let me tell you. 
Yeah, she, you know, she needs this. She needs you you know how you uh you know how you build somebody up. You got to break them down. And Oscar's been broken down, and now it's time to build her back up. Uh, Becky, it's time to break her down to build her back up. And that's why you take the title off of her. And I guarantee you take that title off of her. She's going to be it. I put it this way. You take the title off of her, that's going to build her road to WrestleMania, which is the perfect storyline they could do. Charlotte's the chosen one. Okay. Yes, and here's the thing with Charlotte. Like, yeah, she's the chosen one. The the company wants Charlotte to be the woman, to be that person. But you know what? In my opinion, Charlotte's one of the best athletes in that company. You know, she does bust her ass. It's not like it's like literally given to her. Like, she does bust her ass in that ring. She is great. She's still like you know. To, in my opinion, I mean Becky Lynch is up there, but you know, performance-wise, physical, Charlotte's one of the best in that company. So yes, yeah, she does definitely deserve a lot of the stuff, but it, it's being handed to her. I mean, well, it, it, the, she's the the girl that they want. Yeah, she and especially with the name too. It's like you can't pass her up to where I understand it. But when you look <laughs> on the other side of the the river, Nia Jax, just because she's fucking related to the Rock, doesn't mean we have to push her to the moon. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it's Nia Jax. Fucking, I was not gonna die. I don't want to get back into her. But yeah, I'm not like most girls. <laughs> yeah, fucking I see an Adam's how, apple. That's all how, I'm saying. How do I fucking take it seriously? Like you know, when you talk like that. I, I can't. This is once again. I'm bringing up the word disconnect because there's a huge disconnect with this. So you have Baron Corbin in a TLC match versus allegedly Braun Strowman, right? <laughs> there's no title involved. It's just a TLC match. Makes no fucking sense to me. Just, hey, just granted, the you raw can, thing, right? Yeah, you can give the women the TLC match. That's, you know, the first ever women's TLC match. Awesome. But you know who deserves a TLC match? The fucking SmackDown tag titles. They they should be the ones to have a TLC match. The Usos versus the Bar versus the New Days. New Day. I think they would fucking kill it if they had a fucking TLC match. Uh. That would that would kind of I don't think uh. it would pop the matches that like the Hardys, Edge and Christian and the Dudleys had, but I think they can raise the bar to that level. Pun intended. Yeah, literally. I, I think those guys are the ones that need to have a TLC match, not fucking Baron Corbin. Come on, man. There's no title involved in that shit. A lot, a lot of throwaways in this too. I mean, I don't want to get disconnect. into them. A lot, a lot of disconnect. disconnect. Natalia versus Ruby Riot over her her breaking her dad's her her you know deceased father's sunglasses and now he's on a a picture of a table. It's kind of, I guess you know, I don't know one way to use your dad in okay. death angle. <laughs> Can I say something about this? Right, <laughs> I've made a comment before saying how I like my wrestling real, and this is actually a, a feud. That I'm actually into, um, because it's real. Because she's bringing up her father. Her father is incorporated into the storyline. I was I was on Twitter reading stuff, and we talk about how sensitive the world is today and all that stuff. There are so many people that are so offended that they're using Jim Neidhart to get over Natty, this, that, and the third. Like just people crying, whining, and bitching about it. Come on, man. Really, like I'm sure Neidhart would would love. For this, because it's getting his daughter over, and it's incorporating. You're you're getting a person like Ruby Riot, and giving her legit heat. Like people are getting pissed off all of this stuff. Uh, I, I'm into this, man. I I really am. Like this is one of those like underdog feuds that like you know there isn't much of a disconnect. I'm actually liking it. All right, fair I, enough. Akuda, I, I am too. I gotta I gotta throw that out there. I I'm really digging the feud. Unfortunately, I just. No matter how much they try to change Ruby Riot's look, she's still gonna look like a pelican. Just, oh, just yeah. get over it. Miss that schnoz. You, you gotta fix that schnoz if you really think. Miss Finch. Well, you, can, well, you can't see the schnoz in your hand. Oh my god! Brought it up again, man. Oh, for another episode. Oh my god, you did that to me. You motherfucker. I bought that movie for my daughters to watch, honestly, just so I can see Miss Finch again and compare it to Ruby Riot. If you don't know who it is. Look it oh. up. Follow that bird, Miss Finch and Ruby Riot. Uh, anyway, how about one match where 
I feel like these guys are kind of losing their fan base. And uh, just to wrap up this whole TLC talk, I guess, if you will, Bobby Lashley versus Elias. Bobby Lashley returned, came back as a face, tried to make him into a bigger face, and that failed, so we made him a heel. Elias, golden as a heel, and now they made him into a face which nobody really cares for too much. Uh, are they, do these guys need to just find who they, what they really should be? I have no be? interest in this I, match. This is, it's uh, a ladder okay. match, but... Man, it's they don't know what to do with Bobby Lashley, and they they had it perfect with Elias, but they don't re- they they changed the whole uh, script on him. So, what know. do you think they're doing with this fucking poor uh, Ginger Wendy as the referee now? Like that sucks. Completely off they, subject. They real well, no, it's because <laughs> they used him in that match with Leo Rush to push this angle. Oh, do you think he'll be the referee in the Braun Strowman That's match? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's going to be used to further some of these feuds and angles and like do this authority type storyline. Now, I'm it. it well, the, the one thing I heard too is uh, are we, are we messaged about this because I think we uh, we just saw it this week about Lars Sullivan is lurking. Do you think Lars Sullivan is lurking to get on TLC and debut this weekend in one of these matches and? Uh, fucking who did you see this picture? It's like the, the the logo screen for Lars Sullivan, and it's so creepy. It's him hanging on a fence, and it just says Lars Sullivan is lurking. <laughs> is this the creative I'm they sorry. have now? This is the I'm yeah, sorry. no, because they did a video so... package during the show, and they somebody just took a still from it. No, yeah, okay. that's what it says. He's lurking. Time out. Time out. That's a Vince, Time out. That's a Vince so, fucking thing. We talk about and you bring up that Lars Sullivan's lurking, and he's on a fucking fence. If, if I, I look at that, and we talked about how to catch a predator, and it just fucking reminds <laughs> me that he's lurking at a schoolyard on well, the other I side of the from. fence watching the children play. Like, <laughs> it's just, it, it. I don't know, man. Lars Sullivan doesn't do it for me. He really did. He didn't do it for me in NXT, and he's not doing it for me now. This is another Gene Snitsky. You know, he he's been this, in the I back said that pocket. Last week, dude. He's been in the back pocket, though, for a while because I remember when he first came in, they took a picture of him backstage, and it was just because he has incredibly large hands, and they took some photos of him somewhere backstage. Even before he made his NXT debut, he was still, like, in the whole uh, performance center kind of thing, and it took him a while. It's like years ago, too. I mean, it's, he's been sitting there, and it's, it's a Vince thing. I think Vince loves him. Vince, it's, Vince it's, loves big, sweaty men. I guarantee you he picked the fucking look. lurking he's slogan. Got that- he doesn't have that bodybuilder look. It's more like a power lifter look. He's just a massive dude. And he's no San Martino. Exactly. Exactly. And he had these great squash matches down in NXT. You, you were hopeful. But the second you put him in the ring with somebody who knew what the fuck they were doing. And I, I hate saying this because we always make fun of him. But Cassius Ono was kind of a measuring stick. In NXT, if you can't have a good match with Cassius Ono, I have no hope for you. Because as much as we make fun of him, he can have a good match with, with anybody. I'm Chris not... Stroh is one of the best. You guys have to Google right now the French Angel. Because <laughs> this is like one of the sideshow freak guys. And he fucking looks like Lars Sullivan with a big fucking head. It looks like fucking Shrek. But Google the French Angel. And try, go to images on Google, and then you'll see who it is. This is fucking Lars Sullivan right now. This is who he has. A, he's just like a fucking monster. Uh, huge head, huge hands. He's one of those sideshow guys. This Why is fucking Lars Sullivan. Steel. This is Lars Sullivan right here, and uh, oh my goodness, I, I, no, Georgie Animal Steel reminds me of. You remember that match that Lars had with fucking Cassius, though, right? Yeah, it was one of the takeovers. Yeah, it was it was an opener and it was the drizzling fucking shit. Fucking terrible. I would rather watch a Batista movie than watch that match again. Goodness. Yeah, well Vince is gonna have it his way. Lars is gonna Lars is gonna beat freaking uh Daniel Bryan for the world WWE championship. He's gonna beat all the little people. Then he's gonna say the N word, and then he's gonna have to go away for a few years, and then he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna be brought back at like the Crown Jewel Part Three, and we're all Spe- gonna accept him again. And speaking of Daniel Bryan, <laughs> how 
amazing is this heel character getting over right now? I mean, that the segment with him and Mustafa Ali on SmackDown, I, I thought was great. awesome. That match, Mustafa. <laughs> wait, wait, I, 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 I hate to cut you off. My buddy was texting me because I didn't, I didn't watch any of these shows live. He's like, oh, uh, there's, about, there's a match about to happen between Daniel Bryan and Mustafa Ali. And I went, what? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? This is, this is the way that you should be booking your 205 Live guys. Like, you're not going to get a mainstream audience to tune in to the network to watch these guys. They have no idea. Raw pretty much did not utilize the 205 Live guys the way that they should have been. They pretty much put them out there in a way to just tell you not to tune in and not to watch them, basically. Now, I remember, uh, this is a while ago, and I remember bringing this up, how you need to get these guys mixed in with the main roster guys. You need to have these showcase matches. I, I remember bringing up a match. To, why don't you take a Cedric Alexander and put him out there in, in, a, in a match on SmackDown versus an AJ Styles? Just to push Cedric Alexander, be like, hey, if you want to see more of this guy, tune in Wednesday nights at 205 Live. This is the stuff they need to do. And then they finally did it with a guy like Mustafa Ali, who's amazing in the ring. And then they put him out there. Daniel Bryan said it. Basically, he's like, these idiots probably don't know who you are, but I know who you are. That's the first thing that the way they put him over. These idiots don't know who you are, but I know who you are. That was great. And then the fact that he asked him, he's like, what kind of car do you drive? And when, when he, he said, said SUV, I was like, oh, I know where he's going with this. He's like, you ignorant idiot. You're a little guy. <laughs> why, are you, why are you driving an SUV? You're a little guy. I you have know? a wife and two kids. What? Well, that, that's exactly it because I think they, they relied too much on the division has to just fight the division. You know, cruiserweights only, can only touch cruiserweights. You can't mix and match. And that's where they, I think that, that little experiment went wrong. You have to intertwine these guys into the regular show. Yeah, okay, they don't have to fight for... They're not going to fight for the, the Intercontinental Championship or the Heavyweight Championship, but they can still wrestle each other just because they're different weight classes. So if you break that barrier, I think it'll definitely bring those guys more... Uh, not more noticeable, but more wanting to, to be seen. You know, these kids are going to see him that are watching wrestling. Like, Ooh, who's this guy? Oh, you can only see him on this show. They're going to tune in more and they'll, they'll understand like who's on this other show without having to, you know, always go online or look at on the network. So it's, it's good for them. They need to do more. Of. They need yeah. to do a lot more of this. Well, they did Bring... that a lot this week on NXT. Guess who, who, who made his return over there? Prince pretty. That That's was different. Amazing. Though. It's not different. I mean, it it's is different. different. No, you're taking, it's, it's, you're no, taking, it's definitely different. How is it it's different? It's different because you're taking Mustafa Ali, who isn't recognized by the mainstream audience, and bringing him up there to get him recognized. You're taking Tyler Breeze, and you're bringing him down to a crowd that praises him. Yes. That popped. So it's two completely different elements. Not really. It is, though. Because the casual fan who, who might be watching, might who might recognize Tyler Breeze from... His days with I'll tell you right now. No casual, are gonna be like, you no know what? I didn't realize fans. he was that good of a fucking worker. No casual fans are going out of their way to watch NXT. I'm not saying that, Mike, but I'm saying in case that somebody was possibly watching this, and you you don't think they'd be like, oh wow, I recognize him from this. It's I don't think the casual fans will go out of their way to watch Tyler Breeze because of how he's booked on the on the main roster because they don't watch NXT. They have no idea how great he was. That's the type of match that you want to push Tyler Breeze over. Have that type of match on the main roster where these fucking casual fans can see how good the guy is. And that, and that was exactly, uh, you know, almost what he needs, you know, without wasting away on the on the main roster. And I think Having this, I almost feel like this is kind of things that Vince needs to see. Be like, hey, look at how well he was used here. If only you, you take that and imply it on the main roster without having him to do something silly like the fashion files. Like, look at how talented he is. He's just wasting away and yeah. catering. Like, look, see, if you take away all this mumbo jumbo, whatever you want to call it, you know, the, the being silly and actually make him a wrestler – there's, you know, I hope, I hope, I hope Vince or somebody a higher up sees these and it's not just like hearing about it. You know what I mean? Like, it, see, you can actually use more of your roster in all these kind of situations. And that's, it's, it's a little bit different with Mustafa and, and Tyler, but at the same time, it, it's the same kind of formula where mix and match them. If, use these guys where you're not using them. And hopefully, you know, uh, you can actually. Well, Triple H actually. Come back. 
mentioned that how he wants to take a lot of the talent that isn't being utilized or used on the main roster and bring them down to NXT to kind of give them give them like a rebirth. So I, I hope this is Tyler Breeze coming back to NXT and not a one off to kind of give him like a new breath of fresh air to like to rejuvenate him. Because I mean, when he was on NXT, that I mean, I was one of my favorite characters. I, I loved the way he portrayed himself. He was amazing in the ring, and then he went to, went up to the main roster. And he was feuding with Dolph Ziggler for a little bit. And then from there, it just went downhill because Vince just didn't have any faith in him. Vince had no faith in any of the guys that came up, as you can see by now. And I just hope well, that... you got to uh, take that back. Work. He had no faith in the smaller guys, Mike. That is true. But no, no, not... Eh, yes and no. I mean, there was also... I mean, you got he- AOP, who fucking, for some reason... He got them called AOPP, which still bothers me to this fucking second. <laughs> I mean, it. Yeah, eh, fucking Vince, man. I can't wait for the XFL. Eat chocolate, change your tamp, and don't tug your pack. And let's and let, let's just hope for the best. Now, let's just hope <laughs> that you know, maybe you know, Raw is gonna have a 180. Maybe. And the, the... Maybe, 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 maybe. Hopefully. And maybe the tweets of Christmas past won't come back to haunt anybody else, and uh, we can actually not give a shit about a tweet that happened three years or four years or five years ago about bullshit. 